morning guys welcome back to my channel this is day three of my trip and it's the last day of my trip here in the Okanagan Valley so I am still here in Oliver and uh, we're gonna do a couple stops before heading to Asuyas and I'm really looking forward to showing you guys where I go today um, I already did a workout this morning did some emails caught up on a bit of work uh, some projects and whatnot. So now it's time to pack up and get on the road and go to our first stop. We'll see you there. My first stop of the day is at Vin Amate Cellars. They have a lovely outdoor seating area for wine tastings overlooking their vines. Catherine, who guided me through my tasting, was the winemaker of Vin Amate. Hey guys, so uh, we're here at Vin Amate Cellars. Uh, that is a made up word, but it means uh, two separate words together. In French, vin means wine, and amitié is the old world spelling of l'amitié, which means friendship. But we call it Vin Amate, much easier to say. Cheers. Catherine's passion for winemaking definitely came through as she was introducing each of the wines to me. See by the color, it's like this beautiful, Ruby, lots of ripe cherry, a um, little kiss of vanilla on the finish. It's just a really pretty, pretty wine. Silky smooth tannins. My favorite wines here are their Pinot Gris, their Chasson de Amour, a blend of Pinot Blanc, Orange Muscat, and Pinot Gris, their Viognier, Merlot, Malbec, and their Gamay Noir. Be sure to check out their small selection of snacks available to purchase to make a delicious charcuterie platter. Next up, Church and State Wines. They have two winery locations, one here in Oliver and another on Vancouver Island. This is an included tasting stop with the 2021 Uncork BC Okanagan Wine Passport. The passport has 35 different tasting experiences included, so it's great value if you're visiting the Okanagan Valley and planning to do some wine tastings. Check out the link in the description box below for more information. For tasting here, I chose their primarily white wine flight. Lauren, the wine shop manager, guided me through my tasting at their outdoor bar. I really enjoyed the wines included in the tastings, which were their Muscat Frizzante, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, Roussin, and their Petit Verdot. So in 2015, Church and State Wines was awarded the best small winery in British Columbia by the National Canadian Wine Awards.
I'd love to hear your thoughts. My final stop of the day was at Moon Cursor Vineyards, where I enjoyed an amazing guided tasting with Christian, the winemaker here at Moon Cursor. Here, so we have our Marsan down here with the red tags, our Roussan right here with the green tags, and then a little bit of Viognier further up. But you can see right there, that's going to be a nice little Roussan cluster there. That should start flowering in about two weeks. So you'll see those buds start to open up and, and burst. Uh, Moon Cursor came about by wanting to get back sort of to the roots of what the soy truly was. So this was a very big gold mining town. So you can see all along the ridges here, there's a couple of spots that you can actually see old gold mines. And uh, a moon cursor is a synonym for a smuggler. So all these miners would be coming from the California and everything, and they come up, mine, and then try to smuggle their gold back across the border without having to pay tax. And a moon cursor would be someone cursing at the moon because it was too bright to light up their run, and they wouldn't be able to make any money that night. They transformed the home next door on the property into a beautiful private tasting experience. Definitely something I would highly suggest booking directly with Moon Cursor. The wines I had tasted were their Viognier, which had an amazing blush color, their Syrah, their Dolcetto, which is produced in almost a rosé style, which only has contact with their skins for 72 hours, but the color of the wine is so dark. I also tried their Dead of Night, which is a Tanat and Syrah blend. 19 Syrah. Like I said before, this is kind of what we're gaining traction with for the winery. Mm -hmm. This is actually the only wine that we use Hungarian oak in. So it's a little bit different than we most. Put the wine into both French and Hungarian barrels and then just sort of taste it both side by side with Vita, and Vita's got an incredible palate. We need Dolcetto. So like I was saying, this is a northern Italian variety from Piedmont, um, similar, or the same region as Nebbiolo and Barbera and all that. This is sort of, in, in Italy, the, the poor man's grape. 2019 Tariga Nacional. So this is sort of an ode to the Portuguese community of the Soyuz. Oh, okay. um, this is a Portuguese grape, and it's sort of the main grape used in port production. Uh, unlike any other wine that I've ever tried. So this is our 2019 Dead of Night. So this wine is our flagship blend and it's a sort of 50-50 blend of Syrah and Tanat. So this came about, uh, Chris and Bita wanted to do sort of a, a unique blend um, featuring Tanat and starting it at 50-50. So on paper, it was supposed to be Tempranillo and Tanat because they're very opposite wines um, on paper with their acid levels and their sugar levels and, and all that stuff. But then um, once it got to the glass, it didn't really work out as well as it, it looked like it would. So they, they sat down and did sort of 50-50 of every single variety that we make. So 50-50 Tanat and Malbec, 50-50 Syrah, Tanat. Everything 50-50 with Tanat. And then they bagged them up, did the, did the taste test blind, and they both picked Syrah and Tanat. So that, that proof was in the pudding right there. So that's kind of been the philosophy for this wine ever since. Every single year, it is a 50-50 blend Syrah and Tanat. But this is our, our main workhorse cellar. Um, we have an eight 5,000 liter tanks and two 7,000 liter tanks in here. So every single red grape that we produce passes through these doors. We can do about 55 tons worth of grapes at one point in here. So with us being about 150 tons, we're constantly sort of flipping tanks and bringing in, like pressing something off, bringing something else in the next day, and just flipping as much as we can. But, uh, and 
nice little tanks. It's a very nice cellar. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my three-part series highlighting the wineries I visited here in Oliver and Asuyas. Be sure to subscribe hitting the subscribe button down below. It does help support my channel. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up.